Hello, I'm Jackie from ielts.jackie.com. In this video, we're going to look at six common types of part three questions and how to create great answers for them. The most challenging aspect of IELTS speaking part three is the abstract nature of the questions. By this, I mean that they'll be about ideas and concepts rather than about you as in parts one and two. There are six common types of questions in part three. They aren't the only possible types, but most questions will fall into one of these categories. It's very important to understand what they are and here's why. You'll know from the type of question the examiner asks which grammatical structures you should be using in your answer and what they are trying to assess. You won't get asked every type of question. Most of the examiner's questions will follow up on what you said in your previous answer, but they'll mix it up so that you get a good variety of types. These are the six common types of questions in IELTS Speaking Part 3. 1. Opinion 2. Hypothetical 3. Compare and contrast 4. Change 5. Future and six, benefit. First, opinion. Being asked to give your opinion is one of the most straightforward question forms. Listen to this question. Do you think people in your country are less healthy than they used to be? It's clearly asking for the candidate's opinion. Now here's a sample answer. I've highlighted the words that show that Mustafa is giving his opinion rather than stating facts. Mustafa. Personally, I think that the health of many people is worse than it used to be. This is mainly due to obesity caused by an unhealthy diet. Being overweight can cause diabetes, heart problems and many other serious health issues. A high percentage of the population don't take regular exercise, which is another factor that contributes to poor health. There have, of course, been major improvements in health care in recent years. This means that more illnesses and diseases can now be cured, which has had a positive effect on health in general. However, in my opinion, many people in my country are less healthy these days because of unhealthy lifestyles. There are many other phrases you could use to give your opinion. For example, in my experience, as far as I'm concerned, speaking for myself, I'd say that, I believe that, in my view, if you ask me, I feel sure that. Next, we have hypothetical questions. These are about unreal, or imaginary situations. For example, if tourists stop visiting your area, what effect would it have on the economy? To answer a hypothetical question, you'll need to use the conditional. The clue is in that little word, if. In this sample answer, the conditional clause is used twice, once in the opening sentence and again in the conclusion. I've underlined them to help you spot them. If tourists stop visiting the beautiful beaches where I live, it would have a terrible impact on our local economy. Tourism is our most important industry and many people run hotels and guest houses or work in popular restaurants and cafes. Lots of shops sell beachwear and souvenirs, so these would soon go out of business. Also, there would not be enough other jobs in the area for all the people involved in tourism to find work. So, I'd have to say that it would have a disastrous effect on the economy in my area if tourists no longer came here on holiday. The third type of part three question is compare and contrast. For example, what are the advantages of living in a city compared to living in the countryside? In this answer, Jamila uses three different words or phrases to show that she's comparing two things. I've underlined them so that you can easily identify them. 
One of the best things about living in a city is the wide range of leisure activities, from sports to theatres and museums, unlike rural areas where there are few facilities like this. City shops sell everything you could want, whereas there is limited choice in country markets and many goods are unavailable. It's also easier to find work and accommodation in cities, and the public transport system is better so that you can get around without any problems. In contrast, people living in the countryside often have to walk everywhere or get a bike as there are few buses and no taxis. The roads are also bad. There are many other words and phrases that are appropriate to use for answering this type of question. Here are a few of them. Compare. In the same way, similarly, likewise, comparatively, compared with, contrast, conversely, nevertheless, otherwise, on the other hand, Next on our list are questions about change. These generally ask you to talk about the past and the present. For example, how has education changed since your parents were children? Here's a sample answer from Kwame. Can you hear the past and present tenses as I read it out? The biggest difference is that education is now compulsory for all children up to the age of 11 and many stay on into senior school. My father only went to school for a few years as he had to work in the fields and look after the cattle full time from the age of eight. My mother didn't go to school at all as she was needed at home to help cook, clean and mind her younger brothers and sisters. Education wasn't considered important for girls back then. What is taught in schools hasn't changed much but in towns and cities the children use computers and can learn all about the world via the internet. In small villages, like the one I come from, there are still very few teaching resources and certainly no computers, so some changes in education depend on where you live. Pause the video and spend a few minutes identifying past and present tenses in the text. You may also get a question asking you to speculate about the future such as, do you think that everyone in the world will have access to clean water in the future? Such questions are obviously designed to test your ability to use future structures. This is another type of question asking for an opinion, but this time you need to answer using the future tense. Listen to Chung's answer and see if you can hear where he uses the future tense. I've highlighted them in the text to help you spot them. That's a really difficult question to answer because I believe that we will have the technology to provide clean water for everyone wherever they live but there are other factors to consider that are less easy to predict. Cost is the biggest issue as it's mostly poor communities who lack clean water so it will be necessary for wealthier communities and nations to fund boreholes and other means of providing decontaminated drinking water. Warfare is another huge problem in many areas. It destroys resources and livelihoods and keeps people poor and unable to provide basic facilities such as access to fresh water. Sadly, I think this will always be an issue in one place or another. Our sixth and final type of question asks about benefits. It could be the benefits of a particular situation or the benefits of one thing over another. For example, what do you think are the benefits of hobbies? In this sample answer, what type of words does Gabrielle use to structure her answer about benefits? I believe that there are many great benefits to be gained from having a hobby. First, taking up a leisure activity is an excellent way of making new friends especially when you move to a new area, as you meet like-minded people who share your interest. Second, having an interesting pastime is good for mental health, as it can help to relieve stress and often improves work-life balance. Finally, 
many leisure pursuits bring new challenges and the chance to learn new skills, which are both added benefits. Gabrielle uses sequence words to structure her answer. First, second and finally. Well-structured answers get high scores. This is a simple but effective way of organising your ideas. There are many other time-related words you could use to answer this type of question. Here are a few common ones. Then, next, furthermore, in addition, also, likewise, last. A great way to extend your part three answers, where appropriate, is with examples. You can do this for many different types of questions. Giving an illustration can also be a simple way of introducing a different tense into your answer, as it could be something that happened in the past, is a current situation, or something that will happen in the future. You won't have time to go into much detail, but do use short examples where they fit easily into an answer. Listen to Aisha's answer to the following question and notice how she builds her reply around the example. Giving children easy access to exciting books in their schools and local libraries is perhaps the most obvious thing to do. However, I believe that the best way to motivate them to read more is to invite well-known children's authors into schools to discuss the stories and read to the kids. This is what turned my daughter into an eager reader. A lady called Jacqueline Wilson recently came to her school and read one of her fun stories about growing up and facing childhood challenges. My daughter talked about it for days and is now reading all of Jacqueline Wilson's books and is even writing her own stories. I know from talking to other parents that the visit encouraged other children in the school to read more as well. I think more schools should do this. This is quite a long answer, but it's fine to have one or two answers of more than three to five sentences. You'll probably get a few questions that you can only manage a short answer to, so it will balance out in the end. Even if you have the opportunity to talk extensively with native English speakers or high-level learners, you're most likely to have chatted about yourself and your interests and experiences. You almost certainly won't have spent much time, if any, discussing abstract ideas as you'll have to in IELTS Speaking Part 3. So you need to practice. It's the only way you'll get better. This will get you used to developing these types of questions quickly and effectively. There are plenty of practice IELTS style questions on my website, including 180 on my free IELTS speaking practice cards. I put a link to the page where you can download them in the notes below this video. You'll find more sample questions on all my topic vocabulary pages. Get a friend to ask you several questions, one after another, at the same pace as the examiner will in the test itself. You can do it by yourself if you really don't have anyone to help you. You'll soon get used to thinking quickly and the answers will begin to flow more naturally without you having to overthink either the content of your answers or the correct language to use. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you again soon.